Next to Bernadette for Representative Scott Perry. Bernadette is in New Mexico, Democrats line. Bernadette, good morning. Good morning. Hey, Bernadette. Um, Hi. I have a major question. Sure. You talk about the quote-unquote process. Yes. So how much is this process going to cost us? Now, what I see is that there's an old saying that says, united we stand, divided we fall. The Republicans have done everything in their power to try to divide us. When the, the world sees our leader, the President of the United States, whether you like him or not, when he sees us divided, they see us as weak. So by all, by, well, how much is this process going to cost? Well, I mean, if you're talking about this, the Homeland Security Bill, I think the, uh, the appropriation is $49.7 billion, but I think you're kind of talking in a larger context. And with all due respect, uh, there's a lot of folk that, folks that believe that the president is actually the one that has been the most divisive. And so I guess it is a matter of opinion. All of us want to be united, especially as we look out to the rest of the world, and, and we want to have a united front. But at the same time, we must make decisions together on how to move forward together. And there are already always disagreements. Uh, but for the sake of moving together forward, you just don't throw out the baby with the bathwater and accept things that are unacceptable to your constituents. So it's a give and take. I, I would grant you that, Bernadette. And we just, again, in an imperfect world, we try and make it as perfect as we can. Uh, Representative Perry, someone on Twitter asked why the Republicans are playing politics with national security. Uh, you know, you could listen. I think that's a fair question. But if it's a fair question for Republicans, how come it's also a fair question uh, for Democrats and for the president? He has played uh, politics with national security. Many would say with his policies and with what is essentially, in many people's view, an open border. So while I would agree to a certain extent that you could say that, but it's fair on the other side. So we're both in the same boat together. So okay. you you agree with his statement, particularly what, how Republicans are playing out this? No, I, I, what I agree oh. with is that it can be perceived as such. But if you're going to perceive that as such, I think it's fair to say that if, it, if it's a 50 percent, then there's 50 percent on the other side as well. Brooklyn, New York. Alana, go ahead. You're on with Representative Scott Perry. Hi. Good morning. How are you? Hi, Alana. Uh, yesterday I got cut off, but I was they were talking about who would run for GOP. I personally think that Alan West, he loves America whether he's a Democrat or a Republican, and he always seems to know what he's talking about as far as protecting America. And I think in the near future, we should look into what he knows, how smart he is, and can he do the job? Well, uh, listen, a lot. I appreciate, uh, and I think that Alan, he's a good friend and I think a great uh, American patriot. Of course, he served his nation in combat. Uh, but that's really, uh, at the end of the day, that's Alan's decision to run. And then people will determine whether they agree with his philosophy and his leadership style and his vision for, for America. But uh, it, it's kind of strange to say that we should look into his... I think it's pretty obvious where he stands on most issues, and most people have a strong opinion of Alan West. And listen, I think he'd be a great candidate, so I'm with you, Alana. Quick reaction, Mitt Romney, a possible third yeah, round of the presidency? Yeah. yeah, listen, this is American process. I think it adds to the conversation, which I think is a great thing. Don't always agree with him on everything, but uh, I think it adds to the conversation, and really it kind of enhances our process. So. I would say, I don't know, I'm not planning to run for president anytime soon, but I imagine the others would say, come on in, Mitt, come on in, Mitt, the water's warm. Did you support Mitt last time around? I did, uh, after after the primary. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Andrew, Iowa. Brett is uh, next, independent line. Hi, Representative Perry. How are you doing today? Hey, good, good morning. I uh, want to say I pretty much agree with uh, just about everything you bring to the table. The one point I'd like to bring up about immigration is, Ultimately, we have a legal system to bring people into this country, and those that decide to break that are breaking the law. And anyone who sympathizes with someone breaking the law, whether that be to make life better for themselves or to make other gains, I don't have any sympathy for those people because there's people suffering all over the world. And if those people went stealing and robbing and killing people to make life better for themselves, is that acceptable? Uh, that doesn't make any sense to me. So these illegal immigrants coming in here and people saying, oh, it's okay because they're trying to make life better for themselves, that's wrong. 
Well, it is, uh, I appreciate your input, and it is against the law, which is the problem. But I would also say laws are in a matter of degrees. You don't, uh, you don't put killing someone on the same scale as shoplifting, especially if you're starving. And I think that's where most Americans are. And I think most Americans would agree that our immigration process, our system is broken and has been for some time and desperately needs review and, 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 and reform and, you know, updating. That having been said, just because you don't like it and acknowledge that it's broken does not give you cause, whether you're the Congress or the president, for unilateral action. We also have a system by which our laws are changed. And if we, if we disregard that on this occasion, why not disregard it on every single occasion? And that is the concern. Uh, you know, Congress has ceded much of its authority over time uh, to the executive branch, in my opinion, both Republicans and Democrats. And and on both occasions should have uh, kind of dug their heels in and said, this is our authority, authority by the Constitution. It is not yours, Mr. Executive, and, and we need to retain it. At the same time, let's be responsible and deal with tough votes. That's where we are today. We've been pushed into a corner, I think, to a certain extent. But if that's what it takes to get things done and move forward, that's what it, that's what it takes. And so we should do it. Of your then ask Representative Perry, why isn't Congress deliberating on immigration? Give us the quick and dirty, he asked. Well, uh, I think we will. We just got sworn in, and this is the first step in that. We know we had till the 27th of February, I think, to get a Department of Homeland Security uh, appropriation taken care of. And this process takes time. Even legislative process takes time. I think once we get this done, we've heard from our leadership and members that we want to get into immigration and, and produce uh, legislation, get it to the president's desk. And I think that the American people can expect that uh, very shortly. But I don't think they probably will be able to expect one comprehensive bill. We, we see is maybe one on visa reform, one on border security, et cetera, different components of it, but coming very rapidly. But it is a, a time-taking process of hearings and information and collaboration so that the American people can see transparently what we're doing and why we're doing it, and then say, I agree or disagree, and that produces the best product over time. What's the likelihood that funding for DHS won't happen? I, I think it's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen in the process of, of how it goes. You know, I don't know if the Senate's going to pass it very quickly or easily, if the president's just going to sign it, or if there's going to be uh, some stops along the way there. But sooner or later, it's going to happen. And understand, even if it does, if, if there's a partial shutdown, the large, the vast majority of DHS will occur. So when you say, oh, there's going to be a shutdown at DHS, understand the Coast Guard's not going to be part of that. Uh, it's really just going to be a very small portion which deals with what many people con uh, consider the, Ill the illegal immigrants that are coming across and that component of it. That would be the only component that's not working. The rest of it would be fully funded and operational. It's just a small part that would be stopped. You don't see a shutdown as part of this process, though? Just so it may be a partial shutdown, but understand what parts of the partial shutdown are there. The vast majority of DHS will continue to operate because it is kind of on what we call autopilot. It has to be funded anyhow and has to it has to remain open. Now that doesn't mean that the political narrative and the Democrats won't say the Department of Homeland Security is shut down because if one percent of it or a, a tenth of a percent of it is is stymied, then there are some people that will make political hay out of that and say the whole thing is. And, you know, we have about a seven-second uh, attention span in America today, and that's what people will hear, and that's what they will think, even though it's not true. And